Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the JMA free monthly forecast for today's uh, first video. And this will take us through the entire spring. So we're going to go through March, April and May 2019 uh, with uh, today's JMA free monthly update. This is ahead of the second and final spring uh, 2019 season model roundup that we can do on Saturday. It'll be the first video up on Saturday. We'll get all of the long range models together. It'll be something like 11 or 12 of them. Get them all together and see what they're all showing uh, for uh, the spring of 2019. That, of course, is ahead of releasing the spring forecast on the 3rd of March. Slightly delayed this uh, this time, but um, the spring 2019 forecast from Gas Service will be released on the 3rd uh, day of March. So really this is like beginning the final countdown to uh, to spring uh, 2019. So uh, we're going to go through the JMA um, 500 mm high dominance first and then we'll have a look at the corresponding temperature, precipitation and wind direction uh, charts as well. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your regular week to 10 day video update to have a with you, I say later on this afternoon at Gazovitz. So the JMA will form part of the uh, season model roundup that we're going to do on Saturday. But there's so much information you get from this model that you haven't got time to include when you've got 12 other models to look at. So that's the reason we always like to isolate this one out and have a look at it. So uh, this is what we're starting with. We're uh, starting with a 500 millibar height anomaly for March. And uh, we're looking at the pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. Mid latitudes of Northern Hemisphere are around there. So blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. But JMA for uh, March is uh, placing an anomalous ridge of above average heights through the uh, North Atlantic and up towards Greenland with a trough of below average heights across the UK and much of Northern and Western Europe. That will be pulling in pretty cold air from a northerly direction into that trough of low pressure. So this is a cold and wintry looking signal from the JMA for March. Very, very dubious about this. The JMA has been consistently forecasting Northern blocking, and that is true Northern blocking. It's been consistently forecasting true northern blocking and cold and unsettled conditions for the past couple of months, certainly for January and particularly for February, it hasn't occurred at all. It's still doing it for March, but I don't think we can take that uh, particularly seriously based on how Bond has been performing up to now. Now, this is what we see as we move through to April. So this is the April uh, 2019 500 millibar height anomaly. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, we've got these above average heights around Greenland. They do also extend down into the Atlantic as well. We're losing that trough of below average heights over the UK and Western Europe. And we're going towards um, near normal heights then. So uh, it looks like we've still got a bit of a blogging scene, but I suspect we've probably seen a return of a westerly flow here, actually. Maybe a little bit transitionally, so maybe still a bit of blocking as we start April. But then I suspect we go into more of a westerly type flow as we get through into, uh, into the, the bulk of April. So uh, probably a milder and uh, rather more Atlantic driven, slightly more changeable month perhaps in April. And then finally, we go through to month three, which is May. Very unreliable at this point, of course. So in May, we find we've got a weak area of above average heights, kind of centred over the UK, much of uh, the North Atlantic too. There's below average heights through the middle of the, uh, through the, middle of the Central Atlantic. Um, so it looks like it's a fairly pleasant signal uh, for May. Although what you do tend to find with these charts is that when you're under a yellow area, you think it's an area of above average heights, but then actually when you look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies, they can be, uh, particularly in precipitation wise, can be quite unsettled. On its own terms, that's maybe not too bad a signal uh, for May. Right, so let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude view then. So the British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as we're looking at it. Uh, and we're coming back to uh, March, first of all. So this is the 500 mm of our height anomaly for March. We can't see the pole and we can't see Greenland, Scandinavia. That's off up there, but we just looked at that view down. So we know what's going on. 
in March. We've got this ridge of above average heights through the Atlantic and it extends back into green as well. Trough of below average heights are across the uh, UK and much of Northern Europe probably pulling down pretty cold air into that trough of below average heights. So unsurprisingly, the JMA is going for a colder than average March, below average temperatures, slightly below average temperatures anyway, being forecast for the UK and much of Central Europe uh, there during March. Now, JMA has been doing this through the past couple of months, of course, so you're going to have to re-emphasise. I'm not sure how seriously we can take this. There's been something going astray with the long-range model output this season, certainly since uh, January, and with a lot of long-range models before that, uh, where there have been sort of playing around with northern blocking, trying to get into a blocked signal, and uh, it hasn't come off, really. So that's not to say that this won't come off in March. Certainly the early signs for early March, anyway, not showing anything particularly um, cold and blocked from a northern blocking uh, perspective. So I just say great caution is needed with that. It's not impossible that we could flip from this very mild winter pattern that we've been in and go into a genuinely cold and um, block sort of pattern uh, in March. But because of how poorly the long-range models, including the JMA, have been performing this season, I think we need great caution about what that is showing. Uh, precipitation anomalies, unsurprisingly, are coming out above average as well. So if this is right, if this was to be right, we will probably have some uh, late season snowfalls here because we've got a northern blocking signal, we've got a colder than average month being forecast, and uh, we've got above average precipitation with that trough of low pressure. So this will be a signal for a pretty cold and uh, a pretty wintry um, March. But again, we do have to be very, very cautious and very careful about this. The mean wind direction uh, for March indicated by the black arrows, which are always a little bit difficult to make out, but black arrows are coming into the UK from a north or northeasterly direction. So that's the reason we're pulling in the cold air from uh, the north via the northern blocking that's sitting over Greenland and the Arctic. It's low pressure that's centred over the UK. The squeeze between the two pulls the wings in from the north and the northeast. That's why we're coming away with a cold and wintry month in uh, March. Then we go through to April, and it looks like we're reverting back to more westerly flow in April. We've got some above average heights there around the uh, Azores, a little bit north of the Azores. Still a bit of a blocking signal up towards Greenland. But uh, a weakened blocking signal, I think overall probably just a re-establishment of the westerly flow. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. So actually it's still a little bit subdued, it's still a little bit on the colder than average side uh, there. Particularly for England and Wales, below average temperatures being forecast and for many central parts of Europe. How is precipitation looking in April, so that's still looking a bit above average. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty grim uh, sort of start to the spring, really. Both March and April looking very unsettled uh, and uh, rather cool or cold too. What about the mean wind direction? Where's that coming from? So it looks like the westerlies, the westerlies are trying to come back. Uh, we have got the black arrows pointing in that direction, but still some northerly influences or northwesterly influence, influences coming into uh, the UK. So it's, uh, it's, I still think it's probably transitional, probably starting off quite cold and wintry through early April and then reverting to a more westerly type uh, pattern, but maybe a little bit colder, a little bit more unsettled than I, than I thought in April. And then finally, we get through to May, month three, which has this area of above average heights over the UK. It's just a weak area though, and often these can be more unsettled, they can be a little bit deceptive when you've got those yellow colours in there. Uh, so let's have a look at the temperature. Anomaly. Well, finally, we see a recovery in the temperature anomaly. It's going back to slightly uh, above average, so we're losing most cold and average temperature anomalies that we have in April, and particularly in March. Um, and precipitation-wise, it does look better as well. So that does look like a bit of a ridge extending through the UK in May. Precipitation-wise, we're going on to the drier than average side. Mean wind direction in May is being forecast to be southerly to southeasterly uh, with the Black Arrow. So they're going in that sort of direction. That looks like a very, very nice month 
in May. You would expect a reasonable amount of dry and uh, probably uh, pretty warm weather from most southerly to southeasterly winds in May. Of course, that's three months away. It's very unreliable. We're not sure about uh, next month, month one for March. That's a strong blocking signal and quite a strong wintry signal that we're seeing there from the JMA in uh, March. I'm not at all sure about that. I'm not at all sure. Uh, I suspect that it uh, that, that has resulted from what the model thinks will be the impacts of the sudden stratospheric warming that we have back around the new year. We didn't get that much of a tropospheric response, certainly from northern blocking. And uh, I suspect the blocking will be greatly weaker compared to what that is showing. However, it's not totally impossible that, uh, that the JMA could be right with this. And of course, we're going to have to wait and see how many more of these long-range models are going in the same direction as the JMA. Uh, and we'll know more about that on Saturday when we do the second and final season model roundup for spring 2019. So quite an interesting update from the JMA this month, but I do think we need to stay very cautious about it. Uh, come back later on uh, this afternoon, we're going to have a uh, good look at weather for the next week to 10 days. So that'll, that'll be with you this afternoon. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.